Welcome to the Debeki Cardiovascular Educational Micro Learning Series. Uh, this is a new initiative of uh, the Becky Education and the Journal with the aim of providing short educational videos, more of a how-to in a very specific topic. Atrial septal defects and other defects about the tricuspid valve are some of the most common congenital heart defects, yet they're often missed because they require expertise, dedicated training, and good understanding of the anatomy. We're excited to dive in into the assessment of the interatrial septum, and for that, I would, I would like to introduce Alicia Rangosh, who is a, our adult congenital heart sonographer educator. Alicia has over two decades of experience in imaging these patients, and she's ready to share this with you. Our goal is to teach proper techniques to assess the interatrial septum in order to evaluate the uh, different types of interatrial communications systematically. We start our assessment with the left parasternal long axis view. The patient is in left lateral decubitus position and the transducer index marker is at 10 to 11 o'clock. Using color compare and keeping the color frame rate at or above 20 frames per second, gradually tilt, sweep, or fan the transducer towards the right ventricle inflow taking care to include in the color sector, the left atrium, the interatrial septum, and the right atrium. Watch for any unusual flow across the interatrial septum. Acquire a five to seven beat sweep. If an abnormal flow is present, sample it using pulse wave Doppler. Ostium secundum ASDs are produced by deficiency of the septum primum that fails to cover the fossa ovalis. Typically, it is seen in 2D as tissue discontinuity and color Doppler will demonstrate a left-to-right shunt in red if the pulmonary pressures are normal, as in this example of a small secundum ASD. This case is a large secundum ASD with left-to-right shunt and normal pulmonary pressures. In large secundum ASDs with severe pulmonary hypertension, the low-velocity shunt may be bidirectional or right-to-left and might be difficult to appreciate in color Doppler as you can see in this third example. Our second view is the parasternal short axis view at the level of the great arteries with the index marker at approximately one o'clock. Carefully sweep from the coronary sinus right atrial junction up to the aorta. Color compare clips are recommended and color optimization is imperative. The color sector should include the interatrial septum, most of the right atrium, tricuspid valve, and left atrium. Zoom can be used, taking care to include parts of the surrounding structures to serve as landmarks. The ASD diameter is measured in 2D. Typically, a secundum ASD will be seen in 2D as tissue discontinuity, and color will demonstrate a left-to-right shunt in red, as in this case. Our second case shows a large ASD with left-to-right shunt and no significant pulmonary hypertension. Our third case shows a large ASD and severe pulmonary hypertension. Color can be deceiving in this situation. The 2D image will unequivocally show a large tissue deficiency, and the largest diameter can be measured. The next view is an intermediate view between the left parasternal and the apical windows. It allows more perpendicular alignment of the US beam with the interatrial septum than the parasternal and apical enhancing the image and the chances of diagnosing an ASD. If performed after the parasternal window, go to a lower intercostal space so the LV apex will point slightly toward the left side of the screen. If performed after the apical window, go a higher intercostal space so the LV apex will be pointing slightly to the right side of the screen. The fourth echocardiographic view is the apical four-chamber view. With the index marker at approximately 3 o'clock, start with a gradual sweep from the coronary sinus right atrial junction up to the superior vena cava. Adjust the color sector size or color compare screen. This view may be challenging for interatrial septum assessment because the ultrasound beam is parallel to the interatrial septum, which may appear as tissue dropout. The ASD jet may be perpendicular to the ultrasound beam, reducing the Doppler shift and less color imaging. This case shows a small secundum ASD with left-to-right shunt. 
This case is a large secundum ASD with left-to-right shunt and normal pulmonary pressures. This case shows a large secundum ASD and severe pulmonary artery hypertension. You can appreciate how hard it is to see the shunt in color. The subcostal window is paramount for examining the interatrial septum by TTE. If available, it allows you to assess all forms of interatrial communications. Furthermore, the ultrasound beam hits the interatrial septum perpendicularly with no tissue dropout in the 2D image and provides parallel alignment with the interatrial shunt, allowing optimal Doppler shift. In this window, the interatrial septum is assessed in three different views. The subcostal four-chamber view with the index marker at 3 o'clock, the subcostal short-axis view with the index marker at 1 o'clock, and the subcostal bicaval view with the index marker at 11 o'clock. This clip shows a sweep from coronary sinus right atrial junction to aorta with color compare. Note the subtle movement of the probe. This case shows a small secundum ASD with left to right shunt. ASD diameter can be measured. Here's an example of a large secundum ASD with left to right shunt and normal pulmonary pressures. This case shows a large secundum ASD in a patient with severe pulmonary arterial hypertension. It's easy to miss the low velocity bidirectional shunt. This subcostal short axis view is at 1 o'clock. A subtle sweep in color Doppler is performed in the subcostal view of the great arteries, making sure to include both atria, interatrial septum, and aorta in the color sector. This example shows a small secundum ASD with left to right shunt. The ASD diameter is measured in 2D. This case shows a large secundum ASD with left to right shunt and no significant pulmonary arterial hypertension. The ASD diameter is measured in 2D. Here is an example of a large secundum ASD with severe pulmonary arterial hypertension. The subcostal bicaval view with the index marker between 11 and 12 o'clock is excellent to assess ostium secundum ASDs and sinus venosus defects. Perform a gradual sweep with color from left to right. This view shows the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava connecting to the right atrium, the interatrial septum, the right atrial appendage, and the left atrium. This case shows a secundum ASD with left to right shunt in the bicaval view. This clip exemplifies a large secundum ASDs with bidirectional flow in severe pulmonary arterial hypertension. Notice that most of the interatrial septum is absent, representing a challenge for the non-congenital echocardiographer trying to identify the defect with color Doppler. Our final window is the right parasternal border with the patient in the right lateral decubitus position. This window is ideal for secundum ASDs. Patient repositioning and breath holding at expiration may be needed for image optimization. The interatrial septum can be examined in three views. The bicaval view with the index marker at 11 o'clock, the short axis with the index marker at 1 o'clock, and with the index marker at 3 o'clock. Bicaval view is excellent for secundum ASDs and superior sinus venosus defects. This case illustrates a secundum ASD with left to right shunt. This short axis view, with the index marker at approximately 1 o'clock, shows a secundum ASD. In this normal case, the transducer index marker is at 3 o'clock. And in our last case, it shows a secundum ASD with left to right shunt. Wow, Alicia, that was beautiful. Well, I hope that you all have enjoyed this uh, brief uh, video and, most importantly, learned something new. So please join us in our next micro-learning.